In the first half of this example, we showed a doubly nested loop that had axes to the matrix A, J, I in the innermost loop, which we showed had the address of A plus 256 times J plus I times four. And it was 256 because that was the dimension of the array and times four because it was an array of integers. And we showed that it had this series of addresses generated. As we index J in the innermost loop, we added 1,024 at each step, and that resulted in the following hexadecimal addresses being generated. In this second question, we're asking for this memory reference pattern, what kind of cache miss rate would we have in a direct map 32 kilobyte cache consisting of 512 64 byte blocks? So if we assume that the cache is initially empty, this first axis is guaranteed to be a miss. But in order to figure out if subsequent accesses are miss, we need to figure out where in the cache this axis gets put and whether subsequent accesses access that same data while it's still in the cache. So to do that, we're gonna figure out where in the cache it's put by figuring out what its index is. So we're gonna take this information about how big the blocks are, which are the index bits, and which are the tag bits, to figure out which index this block gets put in. And so we know the bottom six bits are the block offset, so that means this last hexadecimal digit, which again, hexadecimal digits are four bits, plus half of this second one are the block offset. And the other half of the second digit's part of the index. And then the next digit is all index, and then since we need nine bits total, three quarters of this fourth hexadecimal digit is part of the index also. So if I write these digits over here, the first one, they're all zeros. We know half of the bottom digit is part of the index. All the bits of the middle digit are part of the index. And three quarters of the top bits, three of them, are part of the index. And since they're all zeros, we know that this gets put in the cache at index zero. And because we know the cache is direct mapped, it is placed in the only block position in index zero. So the next one, we'll do that one also. It's three digits that are part of the index are zero, four, and zero. And again, we know that two of the bottom digits, the top two bottom, top two digits of this bottom number, zero, are both zeros. We get all four bits of this hexadecimal four, and we get the bottom three of this zero. So here is the binary bit pattern, which if we look at this, if we think about this in decimal, this is bit one, bit two, bit four, bit eight, and bit 16, that this is 16. So this is gonna go to index 16. So we know that this is going to a different part of the cache than the previous axis, and since that was the only one we'd put into the cache at this point, this one also has to be a miss. Now I'll do one more, and I hope we'll see a pattern from this. So this third one is 0, 8, 0. Again, we're gonna get two bits from the zero at the bottom. We're gonna get one zero zero for the eight, and the top bits are zero zero zero. So now we're in the ones, the twos, the fours, the eights, the sixteen, the thirty-two. This is the thirty, this is binary for the value thirty-two. And what we can see from this is because we're adding a thousand twenty-four, we're gonna end up adding sixteen to the set index each time we go to the next value of j. So we're gonna go from zero to 16 to 32. The next one's gonna be 48 and then 64. And so all of these are gonna end up going to different blocks and so all of these are gonna be misses. And so we fast forward ahead a little to the next really interesting one, which is where j is 31. When j is 31, we see that the hex characters that contribute to the index are 7C0, which the bottom three bits of seven are 111, the bottom, or all the bits of C are 1100, and of course the top two bits of zero are 00. So what we can see is we've gotten to the point where we're saturating the top of these bits. And it turns out that this is the 
coding for 496, which with nine index bits, we only have 512 sets in our cache. Again, since it's direct map, each set only holds one thing, but this is going to be pretty close to the top set. So when we go around and we get to 32, we see that the bits are now 800. And if we do the same analysis, the bottom three bits of 8 are 000. zero, zero. And then for the 0 is all zeros. And then for the last 0 is 0. So again, we get set 0. So it turns out that A320 goes to set 0, same set that A00 goes to. But you can see that the tags are going to be different because the tag for this one has the top bit of the 8. And so it's going to be hex 101, whereas the, this first case is going to be hex 100. So these aren't in the same block, but they do go to the same set. So just like this is a miss, this is also going to be a miss. But importantly, it's going to kick this out of the cache. So it turns out that through this whole column axis, each of these is going to go to a different set. And we're going to start repeating the same pattern. This is going to go to set 16, so on and so forth, all the way to 255, which again is going to go to set 496. And all of these are going to be misses. And importantly, when we come back to A01, which is at address A plus 4, we can do the analysis. This is going to again be at the index characters 000. It's going to go to set 0. But this is the one that has the same tag as the original one. But we knew that got kicked out by this axis. So when this axis, even though it's going to the same block that's been in the cache before, it turns out to be a miss. And so what we're doing is accessing only a subset of the cache. And because of that, we're hitting the same set over and over again. And because the cache is direct mapped, as soon as we bring in a new block for a given set, we have to kick out the old one. So it turns out the miss rate for this whole example is 100%. And that's because um, we're not making a very effective use of our cache. So let me try to explain what I mean by it being not very efficient at using the cache. So if we reconsider our original matrix A, we knew that the matrix A was 256 values in one dimension and 256 values in another dimension. And mistakenly, perhaps, we were traversing this array column-wise, which we know is to be a bad thing. So that's partly at fault at, at this miss rate. Um, but uh, because we know that the cache blocks are oriented in the row dimension, um, not in the column dimension. And so uh, each of these axes we know is going to, to access a different cache block. So we shouldn't be entirely surprised that we're going to get cache misses on all of this axis of the first column. But our hope was that maybe when we came back around for axes on the second column, um, that some of these cache blocks would still be in the cache. But we found out that they weren't. And so let's think about how much cache space it would take to keep all of these cache blocks in the cache. Well, we know that there's 256 values there. And we know that each of those cache blocks is a 64-byte cache block. Um, and right away, we can see, well, we know that the cache holds 512 cache blocks. And we would only need to hold 256 in our cache to be able to use them on the first column, get all misses on the first column, but then get all hits on the second column. So again, why, why on the second column are we getting misses when we have enough cache space to hold all the cache blocks? 
And the answer is, is because there's aliasing in the cache. That this cache block, this first cache block, and this 32nd cache block have the same index. And the reason why is that is that in this dimension, this 256 words is 16 blocks. And so when we're walking column-wise, we're accessing block 0, block 16, block 32. We're accessing only indices that are multiples of 16 because it's exactly 16 blocks in this dimension. And so every 32nd block, because we only have 512 blocks, is going to map to the same index. So when we bring this block in, we're going to kick this block out so that by the time we get back to the top that we're not, um, it's not present in our cache. That we're just inefficiently using our cache because in this first column, we're only using every 16th block. That every, the 15 other blocks between this block and this one aren't doing us any good while we're traversing this initial column. So hopefully that's clear.